a new life born from proteoglycans, from destiny to duty. Biomedic Japan Incorporated, President Yoshiaki Kudo. Although Kudo now finds himself under the global spotlight as a leading figure in the field of proteoglycans, it has not been an easy journey. His destiny begins. After graduating from university, I worked for a trading company in Tokyo for a few years. I say Tokyo Trading Company, but we weren't just importing and exporting normal products. At the time, Japan was in a period of high growth, and there was a big technological gap between Japan and the U.S. We would go to the U.S. and collect product catalogs, which we would then sell to Japanese companies in similar industries. I suppose you could say that, rather than being a trading company as such, we were actually introducing various technologies to other companies. That's the sort of work we were doing. In that regard, I think the company was quite unique, which appealed to me. I thought to myself, this seems like an interesting place to work, so even though it was quite a small business, that's where I chose to work instead of one of the big companies. Japan was in the midst of rapid economic growth. The general mindset at the time was that hard work would lead to success for Japan, so people simply worked and worked. From Tokyo to Aomori. When I was 32, I moved back to Aomori from Tokyo and started working at a local company. The economic bubble had burst and companies dealing in construction materials were really struggling financially. At the time, my job was to develop new business projects, so in the beginning I was involved in the planning and execution of various new undertakings. For example, we established businesses like travel agencies and insurance companies. The days went by as Kudo worked to supervise the realization of these new business projects, but somehow he still felt that something was missing. As he desperately searched for a new business endeavor for the coming period, an opportunity presented itself via his previous workplace, his date with destiny. We were involved in a lot of different things at the time, but the one field we hadn't explored was biotechnology. I also felt intuitively that biotechnology was the future and that we couldn't avoid it if we wanted the company to grow. In fact, I felt it should be the opposite. We should be actively engaging with the field. On the other hand, Biotechnology encompasses a wide range of areas, and we had no idea what we should be looking at. Fortunately though, it was around that time that we received an offer to work on proteoglycans, and we jumped at the chance. Proteoglycans. The first time I saw the presentation about working with proteoglycans, I immediately felt that proteoglycans had the potential to completely change the future. We were involved in the wholesale of construction materials, so of course nobody knew anything about proteoglycans. I had no idea in the beginning either. But as luck would have it, we were contacted out of the blue by an auxiliary organization of Hirosaki University in Aomori, which said, this is what we're doing. How do you feel about conducting a joint research project? We'd also like you to be in charge of large-scale production in the future. Obviously, no one in our company had ever heard of proteoglycans, and so everyone just said there was no way we would be able to do it. The only one who expressed an interest was me. I asked a lot of questions, and after finding out more about the project, I told him it seemed interesting. It all started from there, and because I was the one who raised my hand, of course I was the one who ended up being in charge of the project. That was the first time I had anything to do with proteoglycans. Despite being the one who advocated for proteoglycans, I still didn't know the first thing about them. I mean, at university, I was an economics major, so I had never even seen the word biotechnology before. I resolved to start studying from the very beginning. Fortunately, the company was able to pay the fees for me to go and study under a professor who was researching proteoglycan. At the age of 55, Kudo enrolled in university 
and devoted himself to the study of proteoglycans. The more he learned, the more he began to sense the potential behind this unknown entity, becoming entirely absorbed in his studies. However, within the company, there were many who were critical of the project, and Godot spent many days isolated by his colleague. When I told my company that we should actively enter the proteoglycan business, I had to get the board of directors involved, but not one of them supported me. At the end of the day, they were executives of the company, and they didn't want to be the ones who would have to take the fall if the project failed. Luckily, the CEO decided to listen, and when his response was a simple, sounds interesting, it sealed the deal. It definitely wasn't easy getting the board members to consider the proposal. With the CEO's backing, the research project finally got underway. Over time, Godot's confidence turned into conviction that he was doing the right thing. It took about two years, I think. Up until then, I was just studying. But after two years had passed, I finally knew that this was something that was going to be useful to the world. I took our results and visited many different companies, such as cosmetics and health food companies, and listened to the opinions of the people working in the R&D departments and laboratory. I heard a lot of advice from those specialists, and they also showed great interest in what I was doing. A lot of places were telling me that they wanted to try and work something out and I was thinking maybe this is going to work after all but putting it into practice was different because there was a large cost barrier to overcome and actually getting those businesses to commit proved impossible two years of basic research and studying at university had taught me what proteoglycans were and how I could extract them but applying that knowledge to the process of mass production brought up a different problem. The university wasn't able to build a factory, so if we wanted mass production, we were going to have to make it happen by ourselves. Even then, my university professors might have known about the extraction of proteoglycans, but they didn't know about mass production. So it was a case of, if you're going to mass produce, you're on your own. And so we had another hurdle to overcome, suddenly having to learn about all the machinery and such. In addition to that, the raw material for proteoglycans comes from salmon, specifically from cartilage in the fish's nose, which meant that we were going to need a huge amount of salmon heads. But it wasn't possible to get such a large amount of salmon heads in Aomori, so I did some research into where in Japan we'd easily be able to get such a large quantity, and it turned out to be Kushido. So we decided to build a research facility in Kushido, since that was where we were most likely able to ensure a supply of raw materials. I went over there by myself in order to oversee the building of the laboratory, which was another ordeal. We didn't have a clue as to how the project was going to turn out, which meant the company wouldn't fund us and that we needed to find a way to raise the research funds ourselves. I had to be a researcher and a businessman at the same time, it was a never-ending nightmare. In order to secure an efficient supply of the raw materials needed for proteoglycans, Kudo moved the research base to Kushido, Hokkaido. Little did he know that hardships were awaiting him there, too. Mass production is a success, but... We were actually successful with the mass production process itself. Afterwards, we approached various customers and told them that we had finally succeeded handing out samples and trying to get them to make a purchase. But a lot of companies came back saying they just couldn't afford what we were charging. We weren't on the same page. In one year, we probably visited 70 or 80 different companies, but we couldn't close even one sale. The product wasn't selling at all, and we couldn't get anyone to sign a contract. In the end, I just asked them, what price would it have to be for you to consider buying it? But the price they gave was a tenth of what I had imagined. I realized we were going to have to knock a zero off our price. It was all extremely difficult. Up until then, one gram of proteoglycans had cost 33 million yen. I mean, there's no way you could use an ingredient that costs 33 million yen for one gram. But the product I was trying to sell these companies was that price. I told my company, at 300,000 yen for one gram, it would be impossible. But if we could get the price to 300,000 yen for one kilogram, customers would buy it. Their reply to me was, well, can you make that happen? I had no idea how I could manage it. But I said, if we spend some time researching cost-cutting techniques, it just might be possible. The product itself is highly regarded. So all that's left is the issue of cost. And we can fix that by changing the manufacturing process. However, 
Because none of our customers were on board yet, the company told me that I could continue with the research, but the construction of the factory needed to stop. They said it wasn't a viable business, so the project was being discontinued. And suddenly, I was ordered to terminate the project by the board of directors. I went back and forth between Kushido and the head office in Aomori four times while I was submitting petitions to get them to repeal their decision. Just when the project was finally making headway, the company ordered Kudo to abandon it. But he couldn't give up, and he went back to Aomori in order to negotiate with the company face to face. However, determination. They wouldn't let me join the board meetings, telling me that it had all been decided already. In the end, an executive managing director came to Kushido to take responsibility for the whole thing by withdrawing from the project, saying, we had an agreement with Kushido City Hall to purchase land, but as we will no longer be carrying on with the project, we withdraw from Kushido. At the time, I was still a regular employee at the company, so I had no choice but to go back. However, I understood the potential of proteoglycans, and I knew if I could just spend some time to research the cost issue, something could be worked out. So I told my company, I'll do it myself, and quit in order to be independent. In the beginning, I had no salary and nobody was funding the research. So even though I had created my own company, it would take two years for me to receive a salary again. I had to use money from my retirement fund to buy the machinery and raw materials. It was very hard on my family, but my wife supported me, saying that she would stand by me because she loved me. And finally, I think she accepted what I was trying to do. Supported by his wife and believing in the promise of proteoglycans, Kudo made the decision to quit his company. However, further problems were waiting. Kudo realized he would be unable to use the extraction method that he himself had developed. The Aomori company had already filed for and received the patent. Since I was no longer an employee of the company, I had to come up with a different way to do it if I didn't want to commit patent infringement. It was then that I realized a flaw in the research I had done up until that point, where I was using the acid-based method. I spent a long time trying to come up with ideas on how to improve the process, but I was getting nowhere. Kudo had recognized the shortcomings of the acid extraction method, which was that a true molecular structure was not being achieved. He spent his days searching for a new extraction method until one day the answer came from an unexpected place. One day I was watching a cooking program on TV. I'm sure you know about sodium bicarbonate, otherwise known as baking powder. They were talking about using it to tenderize meat on the TV show. It works because by using sodium bicarbonate, you can get rid of proteins. And as I was thinking about that, suddenly I had the idea that I might be able to use it to extract proteoglycan. Sodium bicarbonate. This was the key that would unlock success for Kudo. But he was nearing the bottom of his savings, and he couldn't afford to purchase the raw materials, the salmon heads. This last challenge would use up the last of his remaining raw materials. If this failed, it would be the end of everything. He was gambling his whole life's efforts up to that point on the contents of three test tubes. I received a phone call from the technology center before I left for work, telling me the result of the experiment. The extraction worked. We did it, they said. I told them I was coming over to get the data. And when I looked it over, there was no doubt about it. We had extracted proteoglycans in two of the three test tubes. I was completely overcome with emotion at that point. God had smiled on Kudo. At that moment, an extraction method never before seen by the world was born. The Kushido Industrial Technology Center. Starting with Hokkaido, Kudo received full governmental support and was able to build a factory going on to win the Prime Minister's award. He has spoken about the technology at the General Assembly of the International Bank, IMF. It seemed the path forward had finally opened up to him. His greatest challenge. Last July, there was a fire at my factory, and it completely burned down. As news of the fire spread, several companies made offers to buy us out. I think there were six offers altogether. The factory had been decimated by the fire. Kudo had lost everything. To add insult to injury, Companies were proposing deplorable takeover bids in order to use the unique technology as their own money-making scheme. These companies, who only saw proteoglycans as something to make a profit with, thought of nothing but ways to increase their money. However, 
Even an offer of 1.5 billion yen could not persuade Kudo to hand over his company. It wasn't an issue of money. Right now, Japan is the only country that can make proteoglycans, and it's my hope that the proteoglycans that we developed will be used properly in a way that benefits the people of the world. But when I talked with these other companies, it was like we weren't on the same page, not just in terms of our requirements, but also in the way we ran our businesses. They spoke about buying and selling companies like it was nothing, and that wasn't how I wanted to do things, so I decided not to make a deal with any of them. Although he didn't develop the technology with the aim of making money, Kudo couldn't help but question his own decisions daily. That's when it happened. A man suddenly appeared in front of Kudo, a man named Fujiwara. Kudo couldn't hide his surprise that the man was almost the same age as his own son. The man's eyes were as pure as could be, and he had set his sights on a loftier goal, the Seeds of Destiny. The story had even been reported online by that point, and Fujiwara, the CEO of his company, happened to see it. He decided that, even if it seemed impossible, he still wanted to try. So one day he called me out of the blue. I had no idea who he was, and I'd never heard of his company, but he told me that he wanted to meet me and arrived one day without invitation. The worst thing about his company was the financial aspect of it, but he was firm in his philosophy, and despite being so young, he was very well grounded. He wasn't in it just to make a quick buck. Instead, he did his best to appeal to me by emphasizing his desire to help spread useful products to people all over the world. That's what sealed the deal for me, because I could see he had bright prospects and that he had the potential to become a leading figure in the industry. So I decided to entrust the project's future to him. Moved by Fujiwara's passion, Kudo set to work once more. That was the moment when Kudo's dream, on which he had spent his whole life, had found a man. Kudo had won several domestic prizes. His company was currently filling applications for proteoglycan-related patents in countries all around the world. He had traversed a long, difficult path. What are proteoglycans to you? I suppose, for me, how can I put Proteoglycans are my life. Proteoglycans equals my life. Looking back, Kudo faced a string of difficult challenges, but he was able to overcome all obstacles and achieve his dream with a combination of passion and hard work. It's no doubt that it was all in order to meet this man. Destiny brought the two together and each followed the other's mission. The world's sole alkaline extraction technology, international patents, and halal certification. The preparations were complete. The two are now ready to fly into the world to explore the unlimited possibilities of proteoglycan and to the world.